Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency has announced plans to build the Amur, a reusable rocket which has a very striking resemblance to SpaceX's Falcon 9. SpaceX used Falcon 9 to place itself highly in the spaceflight industry after the rocket became the first to launch into space and land back safely on Earth. Up till now, SpaceX is still the only company maintaining a fleet of reusable rockets, and even though it may seem that Blue Origin, led by Jeff Bezos, may be catching up with their new Shepard boosters, SpaceX still maintains the number one spot in the space race, and now Russia's state space agency, Roscosmos, is joining the party with plans to develop a reusable, methane-powered rocket very similar to the Falcon 9. In this video, we're going to be exploring how both designs are similar and what the Russian space agency has got for the future of spaceflight. Do watch this video until the end, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. The Amur is a two-stage, medium-class carrier launch vehicle seen as Russia's first reusable liquid natural gas-powered rocket. What Roscosmos wants to do is launch each rocket for close to 100 times and return them along the sea in eastern Russia with vertical landings. The executive director for long-term programs and science in Roscosmos, Alexander Blashenko, said that the Amur would be as reliable as a Kalashnikov assault rifle. When you take a look at the first time, the Amur looks like a Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 has lattice control fins mounted close to the top of its first stage, and these fins are also seen in the design of the Amur. The folding landing legs of the Falcon 9 are also found on the Amur. These similarities have many critics say that it simply is a carbon copy of the Falcon 9. Despite the obvious closeness that both rockets have, they also have some differences. The Amur is designed to be smaller and less powerful than the Falcon 9. And the Amur has a height of about 180 feet, 55 meters, while the Falcon 9 stands at about 208 feet, 63 meters. In terms of payload, the Amur will be able to carry about 11.6 tons into low Earth orbit, and the Falcon 9, well, that's got a capacity of 25.1 tons. The booster stages of both rockets also differ. Amur's booster stage features five RD-0169A methane oxygen engines as compared to the nine liquid oxygen and kerosene Merlin engines on Falcon 9. The rocket is still in the design phase, and the first launch is likely not to come before 2026. The CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, welcomed the fact that Roscosmos was trying to go fully reusable with its rockets. On Twitter, he posted a tweet saying it's a step in the right direction, but they should really aim for full reusability by 2026. Larger rockets would also make sense for lateral economies of scale. The goal should be to minimize the cost per useful ton to orbit, or it will at best serve a nice market. Given that the Amur is still small and less powerful, the Amur would be much cheaper at a cost of about 17 million euros. Flocka 9 costs about double that at 38 million euros for every launch. Based on the initial calculations in Russia's space agency, the Amur being created should start being used for test flights as quickly as the year 2026, and it's expected that this rocket system is going to replace the existing fleet of SOS-2 launch vehicles. All launches from the rocket are set to take place at the Vostochny Cosmodrome spaceport in the Russian Far East. The Amur has a central engine which is responsible for landing the stage back to Earth. The engine is designed to operate three times. First time, it's going to ignite at the launch of the rocket, and by the second time, the engine will fire when the re-entry stage is decelerated in heavier and thicker layers of atmosphere. The third time will be for a return to the ground with a soft landing on the Amur's feet. What is Roscosmos and how have they worked with NASA? The Roscosmos, also known as the Roscosmos State Corporation for Space Activities, is in charge of coordinating all space activities in Russia. The agency carries out several civilian activities like Earth monitoring and the astronaut program, and it collaborates with the Defense Ministry of the Russian Federation for Military Launches. This organization was initially known as the Russian Federal Space Agency and formed in 1992. The new corporation was created after the agency was merged with the United Rocket and Space Corporation, an organization started up to boost the space sector. However, Russia has been long involved with space travel before the creation of Roscosmos. In the 50s and 60s, the Soviet Union was one of the leading nations in space exploration, as they were the first country to put a human in space. It was shortly after the breakup of the Soviet Union that Roscosmos came to be. The agency was a major participant in the building of the International Space Station after investing much of its limited resources. In 2016, a new launch facility called Vostochny was also built to take over the former Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Through most of the 20th century, the Soviets were a major influence in the space industry. In the late 19th century into the early 20th century, Konstantin's pioneering rocketry was pivotal to space research and travel. 
The Soviets were able to add to this with the German V-2 missile engineers who were brought in after World War II in 1945. Some Germans from the same program worked with the United States. The Soviets successfully launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik, on October 4, 1957. Some in the United States worried about the influence of communists in outer space. As Americans scrambled to catch up, the Soviets went on to break records and achieve many firsts. Some of these feats included the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, first woman, Valentina Tereshkova, first lunar flyby by Luna 1, and first three-person crew, Voskhod 1. It was not just success all the way for the Soviets, as they had some disasters along the way. On October 24, 1960, an R-16 missile detonated a Baikonur and killed an estimated 150 people. The missions of Soyuz 1, 1967, and Soyuz 11, 1971, both launched from Baikonur and ended with disaster upon landing, which, between the two missions, killed four astronauts. Another famous example was the disaster of the M1 rocket, which detonated at launch on the launch pad on July 3, 1969. Although there weren't any deaths, the occurrence destroyed the launch facilities and halted Soviet plans to send astronauts to the moon. The Soviets then focused on space station technology in the form of the Salyut and Mir space station programs. Mir hosted the longest human spaceflight in 1994 with Valery Polyakov. This space prowess exhibited by the Soviets impressed the US, who were intent on forming a partnership when Russia ceased from being the Soviet Union. International Space Station Contributions The Russian Space Agency started collaborating with NASA since the 70s with the apollo Soyuz test project flight of 1975, which saw a Russian Soyuz spacecraft and an American Apollo spacecraft meet in Earth orbit. The astronauts and cosmonauts worked together in space briefly before heading off for their own separate missions. After the Soviet Union broke apart in 1991, the Russian space program literally ran out of huge funding. Roscosmos then had to be formed to coordinate space activities for Russia. The United States felt that the fall of the Soviet Union would cause economic havoc in that area, so NASA offered paid astronaut flights to the Mir space station, with its astronauts receiving technical and language training in Russia before flights. The Shuttle Mir program, as it was called, flew several American astronauts to Mir between 1995 and 1998. This was what initiated the International Space Station collaboration. When the collaboration was in place, Russian officials eventually decided to focus their resources on the ISS and deorbit the aging Mir. Russia had a major role in the construction of ISS from the onset. The Zarya control module was the first element launched in 1998. Roscosmos had some contributions, which include the Zvezdar service module, the research module Rasvet, a docking hatch, and regular cargo flights to the ISS using Progress spacecraft. Over the space station's lifetime, Progress has only crashed three times in the dozens of flights it's undergone. In the early parts of 2018, all astronauts leaving for the ISS left from Baikonur. This situation started in 2011, when NASA retired their aging space shuttle. At the time, the agency expected to restart flights on US soil in 2015, when the commercial crew's programmed spacecraft were ready. However, funding and development delays caused the test flights to begin in 2018. In 2011, Russia began working on another launch site called Fosto Chini, which is in Serbia and close to the Chinese border. Most Russian launches have been shifted to Vosto Chini because Baikonur is on Russian soil. Baikonur used to be a part of the Soviet Union. By the time Kazakhstan declared independence, the Russians had to lease the facility. Before the initial movement of launches to Vosto Chini in 2018, some other launches had taken place there prior to that time. Three satellites were successfully launched in 2016, but after Vostochini's second launch in late 2017, a $45 million satellite was lost. Roscosmos is a major provider of launch services to other countries. Its Proton rocket line has had some issues in the past years. Three Breeze M upper stages failed in separate launches across 16 months, prompting a full review in late 2012. Then in 2013, another booster failed 17 seconds after launch. In 2015, satellites were also lost due to failures. Apart from launching satellites from other countries, Roscosmos also does numerous satellite missions of its own. Some of the notable activities include Earth observation, military satellites, telecommunications, and GLONASS navigation satellites. In 2013, a fragment of a Chinese satellite reportedly collided with a small Russian laser ranging satellite called Blitz, ball lens in the space. The crash knocked Blitz from its original orbit and broke it into at least two fragments. Russia is also looking forward to a major Mars mission, ExoMars, 
which it is doing with the European Space Agency. ExoMars First Like, the Trace Gas Orbiter, launched successfully in 2016. The rover is now expected to be launched in 2022 after some delays due to scheduling problems. Roscosmos hopes that this mission will break the streak of several failed Mars missions. This includes the most recent Phobos grunt failure that happened in 2012 when the probe could not break free of Earth's orbit. Roscosmos is currently building the Amur, and it seems they're copying the US counterparts. They do have some experience in the space sector and should not be underrated in their capabilities. Whether or not the Amur is a carbon copy, we will all continue to watch as the rockets continue to outdo themselves. Thank you for watching this video, and while you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these videos on your screen. See you there!